welcome to the Money Savvy Parents podcast, the podcast for parents to gain financial education to then pass on through the generations. I am your host, Laura, mother to three beautiful children and founder of a financial coaching business, Savvy Peacocks. Let's remove the taboo from money together. Welcome back to my podcast. Thank you so much for coming back and joining me. Today, we've got a question from the audience all around credit. So let's delve straight in. Hi, Laura. There's so many borrowing options out there at the minute. And I'm just worried that I would get tempted to use those borrowing options and get into a lot of debt. I'm just wondering if you can explain credit and what the best way is to use it, please. Thank you so much for the question. Um, I think you're not alone in having this worry or this anxiety about credit and using it. And I believe that's come from the fact that society has told us over the years that credit is a dirty word and that it shouldn't be used and that we should be avoiding credit facilities where possible. But I actually have a different opinion on this. I believe that there's a, a time and a place to use credit and sometimes it can be the best option. And occasionally it's the it's the only option if you're not prepared for an emergency, for example. So today I'm going to talk through um, some of the ways in which you can use credit in the right way and some of my hints and tips about this. So first and foremost, I mentioned there that sometimes credit can be your only option, especially when you're not prepared for an emergency. So the first way you can avoid this before you start thinking about using any kind of credit is focus on building up an emergency fund. You may have heard this terminology being thrown around a little bit, It's basically where you build up a fund of money that you set aside and you can only dip into when there's an emergency. So it means that those things that happen in our lives that we can't expect are covered. Uh, A popular one is when the washing machine breaks down. You know, you don't expect that cost. And so you can use your emergency fund for that rather than just whacking it straight on the credit card. Obviously, be aware that anytime you do use your emergency fund, you're then going to need to retop it back up again. Again, most people you'd like to hold between £1,000 and £2,000 in an emergency fund. So if you've not already got that built up or set aside, then I would say that's the first thing you can do because it would just avoid buying on impulse or in an emergency through credit and you can use your emergency fund instead. Secondly, credit can really help with building up your credit score as we heard in episode three. So as long as it's set up in the right way and that you understand what you're getting involved with, then I think that it can be a great tool to be able to build up your credit score, particularly if you're in the early stages of your adulthood. But part of that means that you've got to ensure you're able to make those payments because of course you could take credit, not be able to make your payments. And then of course that would have a negative effect on your credit score. So it's it's kind of a a domino effect there. So when I say affording the payments, what I mean is not only the payment of what you're purchasing, but all the associated costs that go along with it, because that will ensure that you don't have to use more credit in the future. And I give you an example. So if you're buying a car on what they call PCP, which is like a a monthly loan where you pay a monthly payment, you might be comfortable with the £150 that the car dealership has quoted you. But there are lots of other associated costs when buying a car that actually gives you a true figure of what you need to be able to afford per month. So you could easily afford the £150 per month. But if you add on top of that your car insurance, setting some money aside for an MOT, a yearly service, and of course replacing the tyres every two years plus saving up for a little bit extra for your next car when you want it in two or three years time you're really looking at a true cost is probably more likely to be around £300 a month so it's really easy to get fallen into the trap of oh I'm going to buy a new car it's only £150 a month when actually the true cost is more likely to be around £300 a month if you want to ensure that you're not going to rack up any debt. So without considering all of these options it could mean that you could end up in a sticky situation. So anytime you're going to get into any any credit, think about the associated costs that go with it. And I'll give you a few of the other examples through this podcast as well. 
So now I want to talk about some borrowing options. And these are my top four borrowing options that I think can be helpful if they're used in the right way. But within this, I'm just going to explain some of the things that you might not understand about these top four borrowing options. And then that should help you work out if they're the right choice for you. Some of the things that I'm not going to be talking about are things like payday loans or buy now, pay later. I do not endorse those borrowing options at all. I would avoid them at all costs. They have high interest rate and are often set up to trick you into ending up paying a higher interest rate. So where possible, avoid those credit options. So the first one I want to talk about is overdrafts. And the reason I want to talk about this is because a few years ago, interest rates around overdrafts changed because the banks were told that they had to stop charging people overdraft charges. So what was happening historically is someone would have an overdraft and then if they went over that overdraft facility, they would be charged a daily rate from the bank as a charge, a bank charge. And a lot of people were being charged in excess of 50, 60, 70 pounds a month because they were going over their overdraft. So they were told that they were no longer allowed to apply these charges because it was unethical, particularly for those people that are actually trying to get out of debt and clearly have got a credit issue if they're going over their overdraft limit. So what they were told is that they needed to stop those charges. So the banks actually chose to increase the interest rates to a much higher interest rate. And a lot of people don't realise that this change. So it used to be around the same interest rate as a credit card, maybe 16, 17%. It's now more likely to be around 30 to 40%. So if you're sitting in your overdraft at the moment, that is actually more expensive than a credit card. So if you're do if you're using your overdraft at the moment and you're you're sitting in it every month, then refinancing it into another credit facility may well be the option. Overdrafts are designed for short-term borrowing, really for no more than a few days within your overdraft. So maybe towards the end of the month, you've got something that's come up one or two days before you get paid, then fair enough. But really and truly, if you're using your spending planner that we've talked about in previous episodes, then you should be able to to be in a position to not use your overdraft. But it is always good to have there as a backup um, and ensure that you've got access to cash when and if you need it. The second one is personal loans. Now, a lot of people don't realise that personal loans are available for as low as 3%, right up to about 20%. And that's all dependent on your credit score. So again, another reason why that score is so important, the better credit score you have, the lower interest rates will be available to you on credit score. And they can be used for any purposes. Personal loans are available for anything, as long as it's not illegal, of course. So a great example is you could use a personal loan to to buy a once in a lifetime holiday. But the same as what I said about the car purchase, don't just think about the holiday, think about all the other expenses that go along with it. Travel insurance, whether you need new summer clothes, what food you're going to eat when you're out there, getting to and from the airport, all of those additional costs that come with a holiday um, are the things that are going to tip you over into getting into more credit if you're not accounting for it within the original credit purchase that you're using. So the third option I want to talk about is a homeowner loan. And the reason I want to talk about this is because it's not talked about enough. A lot of people don't even realise it's an option available to them. So a homeowner loan runs alongside your mortgage. It's exactly the same as a personal loan, but it is secured against your property. Therefore, it is a lower interest rate like our mortgage rates. And typically, people like to use this when they're looking to improve their property. Um, I would suggest if you are going to improve your property, then a homeowner loan is the route to go down. Um, You can take it over a longer term. And of course, if you can do it, if you can spend the money on something that's going to increase your property value, then it makes even more sense. It's a cheap way to borrow money. But just remember that it does take a little bit longer to set up, as I say, because it's secured against your home and it is like a mortgage. So you're going to need a four to five week lead up in order to get your hands on the money. So it's not as immediate as some of our other credit facilities that are available. And then the last one that 
that I wanted to talk about today was credit cards uh, because this is the one that makes people think that credit is a dirty word. And I think that's where this myth comes from with it being a bad thing. Um, and, it, and the reason it happens is because credit cards often create that spend now, worry later mentality, particularly as it's on a card and it can be very tempting. But I also believe that they can be really useful for budgeting. And of course, if you sign up to one that's got loyalty points or a rewards program, then you could also benefit in that way as well. So if you are tempted by a credit card um, and spending money and having it available to you, then a few things you can do is you can certainly keep it out of your wallet and have it there for certain purposes. But also think before you spend on it, how does this spending create more wealth for me? Or how is this going to improve my lifestyle or help me as a person? And if that's not the case, then I'd question why you're using it. Um, and it goes back to a tip that I share often is around if you want to purchase something, keep it in your shopping basket for 24 hours before you actually click buy now. And then that means that you, you've got that 24 hour grace period. And chances are, if it's not something that's essential or it is a bit of an impulse purchase, it, you won't feel so drawn to it after 24 hours. So that's a good way of, of regulating. But as I say, a credit card is great for budgeting. A lot of people use them to put all their food shopping on, therefore gaining the loyalty points or the rewards and then paying that off at the end of the month and ensuring that they're sticking to their food shopping budget. So credit cards can be used in a great way. So I've talked about quite a lot of different things there. So I just want to take an opportunity to recap. And before we do that, just be aware of the messages that we're giving our children, because I'd really like to change this theory that credit is a bad option or it's a dirty word. Um, I think if we can educate our children, then it means that when these options are available to them, they're not going to be scared to use them and they can use them in the correct way because there are lots of ways that they can be used in the right way for the right purpose. As I've said already in this episode, understanding the true cost of things can really make sure that you don't get into continual debt. And if you are finding yourself in debt, then decide on a program to get out of debt and in future episodes I will be sharing some options as to how you can manage your debt and get that under control because making a plan to not continually be in debt is the best way to move forward. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed that episode today and I look forward to having you with me again in another episode. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to Money Savvy Parents. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please subscribe and post your money questions within a review for future episodes. If you want to learn more, then please join my Money Savvy Parents Facebook group or club on Clubhouse. Let's remove the taboo from money together.